Sweet, beautiful friends. Hello and welcome back to Divine Alignment, Death and Rebirth. It's a big topic. It is so prevalent in our collective right now. We're going to be diving into this because there, I really want to equip you in navigating this and understanding this in peeling back the layers so that you can move through this time. So I feel really called to share about this today because the recent world events have really made this very strong in the collective energy right now but whenever you're listening or watching this is absolutely perfect because even though it's coming up particularly right now we're always moving through death and rebirth um always this is the cycle of life and what's so fascinating about death and rebirth is that it's two sides of the same coin and when I first learned about this, I was just like, my mind was could not comprehend it. It could not even comprehend it because it was like, uh, no, when something dies, it is gone. It's gone. And then I realized, no, like this is the nature of the universe. Something cannot die without something being born. So, you know, just currently in our world, there's just been a lot of <laughs> um, collective fear, a lot of natural disasters a lot of things happening that are emitting a fear frequency and when the fear frequency is in society it's very easy to feel the energy and presence of death because ultimately this is really like really getting it's so funny I'm like talking about this and they're like <laughs> I'm automatically touching my solar plexus and they're like because this is like literally like your lower three centers your solar plexus sacral and root it is threatening your sense of safety and security when there are external things happening and it doesn't matter if you are in the vicinity of the fires or the natural disasters or the fake <laughs> not fake but um uh, I just need to be careful what I say sometimes but you know what no like I can't really like I'm trying to censor myself sometimes but like my perceived I'm just gonna say it my perceived um what I believe is that it was planned and created the um uh, hurricane so um when so it doesn't matter I don't live in Hawaii in um California in Canada which are like right now again whenever you're listening and watching this you're gonna have tools to navigate death and rebirth but that's what's like been really presently been coming up for me and just like this collective heaviness with all of it so even though I don't live there I have friends dear friends in these places in all of these places and part of like connecting energetically with people and being a human being is that we feel we feel what's going on in the collective and the more that we are raising our vibration and and ascending we're going to feel deeper levels of empathy and awareness but also have stronger tools for navigating all of this so as we kind of just unpack, like, so I'll never forget the very first time that I heard that death and rebirth were the same, two, two sides of one coin. It was so, uh, my mind didn't understand it. My soul did, but my mind didn't understand it. My mind was like, how could something, when something dies, it dies. And the nature of the universe is that when something dies, something is always born. So like, this is like a basic thing that we learned, like matter cannot be created or destroyed, right? And this is true because matter cannot be created or destroyed, period. This is the case for everything. And so we won't always consciously or um, rather uh, with, our, with our human eyes see 
what is birthed in the place of what is released, but something is always going to come in its place. And so when there is this collective energy of fear, I myself personally was feeling so heavy. Um, my like best girlfriend in Canada, she had to leave her. She was evacuated uh, from the fires and 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 then just like seeing all of the perpetual, and this is like, this isn't just me. I know a lot of people are feeling this um, really just like heaviness um, because we're sensitive souls, right? And like seeing everyone talking in California, preparing, and it, it, my soul feels this heaviness because it wants to help. And so if you're feeling the heaviness, it's because you care and because you're tapped in and sensitive. But what also comes with this frequency is, is fear. And well, what is fear? So if we, it, you can boil down every single fear to the fear of death. Truly every single fear, this is the root of it all. Um, not being accepted, not being loved, like all of these things, it all ultimately boils down to the fear of death because in our ancestors time, if you weren't loved, like as a baby, if you're not loved, if you're not cared for, you're going to die. And in our ancestors time, if you were like neglected from the tribe, you would die. You can't survive on your own. And so all of these fears that seem perhaps like shallow or superficial, they're still rooted in death, which is wild. And the thing about that is that so when we get to these times, it's it's an invitation for us to confront death. It's an invitation for us to confront death. Because the reality is, is that we cannot step into the rebirth until we confront death. Personally, I'm noticing just like a really big opportunity here for myself. Um, something that that I did is just because I was feeling so much collective heaviness is I was I was called to go to the ocean and send energy to the Pacific Ocean and work with the grid and the ley lines and do this like energetic work with the earth. And that was one of the most healing experiences for, for myself just to be involved in. And this is how I really like found my, my grounding and my center and like recalibrated and regained my power. And as I was in this kind of just like ceremony with myself and, and the earth, she told me very clearly, like, can you let it all go? Or rather she asked me. Can you let it all go? And so I'm going to pose this question to you. What are you scared to let go of? It's it's normal to have things to be to be scared to let go of things. I'm I absolutely have these fears come up and and arise within me of 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 my human being scared to let go. Because we don't know what's on the other side and subconscious mind does not like unfamiliar. It just does not the subconscious mind likes familiar, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's not serving you, even if it's traumatic, even if it's like making you unhealthy, broke, not be in love, whatever it is, the subconscious mind knows that it can handle that and deal with that. And so it doesn't necessarily want love, abundance, health, radiance, if that is unfamiliar and causes you to leave what is familiar. So just like recognizing that within like the primal part of our brain. Yes, we work with this. And this is one of like the main things I help clients with is like recoding and releasing that so that we can move forward with greater ease. But until we really like so like step one, just accepting like you're human, you're okay. It's normal to not want to, uh, to fear change. But as they asked me, like, can you let it all go? Can you let it all go? 
And I started thinking about everything in my life. Like, what am I holding on to? For me, what I was instantly drawn to is who I've perceived myself to be, who I perceive, who I believe others perceive me to be. Um, and, and even like materially, like material possessions that, that bring comfort. I had a, a, a conversation with my dear friend and mentor and she showed me so clearly something that I wasn't able to see because I see patterns in other people so clearly, but with myself, this is how we work. This is how we work as humans. We're not meant to see all of our stuff ourselves. So having an outside perspective is very helpful and beneficial. And what she showed me is she she was we were talking about this particular person who has come in my life and she said this this person he's come to to show you expand you into the complete opposite basically of how you've been living he travels around he has no home base and he just travels around and he loves it and it's interesting because for me like my soul is like that feels like very ungrounding and so it's not like go do that and just like just sell everything and go travel around because like that's not me that's not like that's not who like I believe looking into like human design and um like numerology and these things like just like based off of my design and like how I'm coded and wired that's not me to just <laughs> not have like that um not have any security or safety however this person was brought into my life to show me that this is it's safe you can be safe and happy and free doing that and I've, of course I've seen other people <laughs> on the interwebs you know travel around and all of that but um but it's different when it's when you you have like a, a connection with them right because you truly understand and see and know how they feel and how they're navigating it. And so as she showed me this, I started thinking like, even materially, like, what can I let go of? And, and I think this is a great practice when we're in this like death and rebirth energy of like, okay, if you're struggling to let go of like emotional things, how can we start, start with the physical? Because sometimes like that's easier and like gets the energy moving. Like how can we let go of physical things? And so for me, I always just kind of like start looking around my place of like, what, what, like, what am I ready to let go of? What is, what is reminding me of old versions of myself, of past versions of myself, of, or what doesn't feel aligned with where I'm going? What doesn't feel resonant for where I see myself heading? This is a big, a big, you know, these are, it's like two ways to look at it, right? Because maybe you don't know like your, your past self, but like, um, looking at like tuning into your future self, which if you haven't done my meditation of your future self, um, forget the full name of it. It's like your highest self, uh, divine self. So the activation, I'll link that below. Um, I really highly your infinite portal to your infinite self, definitely, definitely listen to that and let it activate you so that you can tune into your, really where you're going. And I recommend doing this like every so often, like as you feel called, perhaps like on the moons or once a month or, you know, just like whatever you intuitively feel, but like doing something like this, where you like are constantly checking in and tap tuning into your to your next level, to your higher, higher self, to your divine self, um, which is, it's really important because our timelines are always updating. They're always updating, especially with everything going on in our world. And like the collective shifts, like if you're doing any type of energetic work, like 
your timeline is shifting. And that's something that I have to remind myself of a lot is like just having grace on yourself of like, I, I thought I knew, I thought like I could have said for sure, this was like, this was where I was supposed to be going. And a week later, it's not. Timelines are updating, timelines are shifting and having like awareness and understanding that that can be uncomfortable. It can be ungrounding, but that's part of the process. And really just ultimately like coming back to what is your relationship with death? And this is a hard one because I know I can say this, but it's more of a visceral, like felt experience to truly know that you could never actually die. No one could ever actually die. And, and again, that's like another thing I know I can like tell you that, but, and I myself haven't fully come to understanding of that. I definitely like know on a much deeper somatic level, but I'm still not a hundred percent there. I have a, I have a sweet dear friend who, um, <laughs> she's much older than me. Um, most of my friends are, and she always says like, I can't wait to die. <laughs> I can't wait to die. She's a, a, a QHHT practitioner. And she always tells me I can't wait to die because she knows <laughs> that there's so much beauty and like, love and and just incredible things on the other side right so she's not afraid to die but as humans we're literally it's literally like a program that we're scared of death and it's okay like accepting and loving and honoring that part of us and then knowing that ultimately like it's a choice like are you going to live in the fear of death or are you going to live in the fear of your life changing and I'm saying all of this from like, absolutely not mastering it, but like I'm in it right now. And every time I'm like tuning in to like, dear goodness, <laughs> just as I'm like saying this, my ear is like ringing because every time I tune into like, what should I do next? I literally just receive, you're still in the death. You're still in the releasing. And this is what's so important when we're in the death and rebirth cycle. We can't rush the death cycle. There's going to be micro and macro probably every single day, but true, obviously like at a bigger scale at times during your life, like we're going through death and rebirth always, but I believe there are bigger, there are times when this is more prominent, right? And when we try and rush the death cycle. And maybe for some people, I'm just like sensing that this would be better to call call the release cycle, the letting go, the surrendering cycle. Uh, because some people really like fear death. So so if that like feels more comfy to you to just say the release cycle, the letting go cycle, the the surrender cycle, uh, that's fine. And Letting that come to completion. Letting that come to completion before you are expecting yourself to be in the next phase. Before you're expecting yourself to be in the birthing creation cycle. Now, why this is so important is if you don't fully complete the release cycle, the surrender cycle, there's still unfinished business there. And so while you may begin to create that unfinished business is going to carry with, carry with you and will most likely lead to another opportunity of release and surrender because we have to like complete it first. We have to complete it. Energetics, like this is how, <laughs> this is how the energetics work. And so it's not, it's not like a bad thing. Like I understand like there's life, but until we like complete it and like allow ourselves to be in fully in it and just 
let the release take place. Until we let ourselves do that, there's going to be this lingering like, <sighs> you need to deal with me energy from it. And this is where we begin to see like health issues and um, things start arising because if we don't fully listen to it, then the universe has to talk a bit louder. Your soul lovingly talking to you a bit louder. It's not because you've done anything wrong. It's just because this is your soul's desire for you to know and to grow through, right? So it's not that you've done anything wrong. It's just like there's a deeper soul desire and a deeper soul knowing that if you move through this and let this fully go and release this, then what is waiting for you is so much greater and grander, right? So like really allowing this death, <sighs> release, <laughs> surrender to take place. And lastly, what I feel is really important to weave into this conversation is that sometimes we're holding on to things because we think it's serving other people. And I want you to truly understand and know that you holding on to something for someone else is not actually serving them. There's a few things to this. First of all, and again, I know there are so many scenarios and situations and, and I cer certainly like don't want to invalidate whatever you're going through, but there are, here's a few, a few things by you by you surrendering and releasing, you actually give them the permission and freedom to surrender and release something in their life. By you surrendering and releasing, you're actually upgrading and expanding yourself so that you may show up as a better person with them, for them, or just in the world. Also surrendering and releasing, maybe that person is no longer supposed to be in your life. Um, and you're simply just, you know, not wanting change. Also surrendering and releasing is, is giving that person, like they just don't want to say it to you that whatever needs to be surrendered and released, but by you doing so, it's actually better for both parties, right? So feel into whatever one of those situations or scenarios uh, feels better for you, but Ultimately, <laughs> law of one, you supporting you is going to support others. And this is really like one of the hardest things I think for sensitive people like myself to understand is that um, because we think we're being selfish, right? We think we're being selfish when we are doing something that's not for others. And it's just like purely for ourselves. Cause we think it's just purely for ourselves, but really it's never, it never is. It's whatever growth you are doing for yourself, whatever healing you're doing for yourself, you are inevitably healing the whole. You are inevitably contributing in a positive way to the whole. That's how the law of one works. We are all one and we are all one and we're not at the same time. <laughs> but when you do this deeper work for yourself, you are helping others. So if you, if you release whatever it is, surrender, you're actually serving them. And so when we actually allow this death, surrender, release cycle, letting go cycle to complete, this is where we are now in the rebirth. This is where now we feel the fresh inspiration. This is like, this is the phoenix rising. This is the butterfly coming out of the cocoon. This is, this is like, just remember that it's like, you have to be in the darkness sometimes 
in that cocoon, struggling, fighting to get out. And then once you get out, it's like, oh, so glad I let that, that process take place of maturing and growing the wings of the butterfly so that I could break free and now have these strong wings to fly, right? It's so funny because nature mimics this and shows us this so beautifully and so effortlessly. And yet as humans, we're so we're so disconnected so often from nature that we don't see the inherent wisdom and beauty and perfection that that is available to us that is us that that we are part of and so whenever we are lost we i look to nature always because then i'm reminded who i truly am and allowing nature to hold you through your death and rebirth process through your surrender and release so that you may now birth the next iteration of you I also just want to, I think I just want to end on, I want to honor you because I know that it can be really uncomfortable in this process. And it's very, we have a plethora of ways to numb out in our society. And the fact that you're just listening and watching this shows that you're like here to do the deeper work and many people aren't many people aren't ready for that and so like I just so honor and see you and witness you in this uh in whatever part of this cycle you are currently in you know it's it's interesting because I personally like right now I feel myself in like literally right in and this is just like where I feel like right now but it could change like right in the middle of like it's like the tipping point of like I've let things go there's still a little bit more and yet I I feel and sense and see the creation that is like waiting and ready and it's a really like it can be a bit disorienting and so like so just like whatever you can do to support your physical vessel grounding um nourishing foods lots of water with minerals electrolytes like these things that just like soothe our human um if you can get sunshine if you can be with people you love but also spending time by yourself like balancing these things out just it's it really is kind of like the basics that we neglect sometimes <laughs> but these are truly where where so much of the healing lies is the foundations, water, sun, earth. <laughs> These are the foundations and things that will support us during this time. So I see you, I witness you. And if you need additional support, please reach out to someone, myself or someone else. Navigating these is so challenging to do alone. So please reach out to someone and no your birth your rebirth it is right on the other side and when we can really allow ourselves to just go into the depth of the of the surrender to fully let go you will be so richly rewarded in all aspects and so with that my loves i am sending you all infinite love and light <laughs>